The views and opinions expressed in third place are those of the host of the program and its guests. They do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of WHYRLP or the Baton Rouge Progressive Network, its members, or its underwriters. We encourage conversation about our stories and hope you will share your thoughts. If you have comments or suggestions about this program, contact us either at 225-255-1030 or by email at third place at whyr.org that's t h i r d p l a c e at w h y r . o r g hello and welcome back to third place i'm your host david brown and today's show is initially broadcasting on July 29th, 2021. We're fortunate today to have with us as a guest, Bruce Kives on the continuing uh, celebration of the 10th anniversary of WHYR Baton Rouge Community Radio. Bruce Kives grew up in the New Orleans area and he's a graduate of Tulane University in electrical engineering. He's been a resident of Baton Rouge for 40 years now and has a wife and two children. He works in computer support and he is also the head of the WHYR technical department. And he's also on the programming committee and on the board of WHYR. Bruce Kives, thank you so much for joining us today on Third Place. And thank you so much, Dave. Well, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about what you do during the day for your day job and your, your background in electronics and IT? Um, I basically fix very large computers. Um, they used to call them minis and mainframes. Now they just call them servers. Um, we're still talking room size computers. Uh, the largest computer I had had 200, 256 processor chips, not cores, but actual chips. That many <laughs> big boxes. The biggest disk array I had had 1,400 spinning disks. So we're, we're talking big boxes. Yeah. And I also, I did pretty much break fix stuff, but I also handle networking and I did security for a while and software and environmental with power and heat and all the rest of that stuff. So I've done a lot to do with computers. A little bit of all of it, it sounds like. Yep. It also sounds like you can probably handle everything that we've got going on there at our little community radio station. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, how did you initially get involved with Baton Rouge Community Radio? Well, I've been in radio for, I was in radio a while back when I was in college, WTUL. Um, I was chief engineer there and I was on the board there. And uh, we actually have two of our DJs currently that came from TUL. Both Rob Sherman and Christopher Albright were ex-TUL DJs. Um, but I moved to Baton Rouge for work, um, got busy. With, uh, I hung around KLSU and KSLU for a while there just because I liked college radio. But, you know, work came first and then family came next and all the rest of that. So I kind of uh, walked away from it. Then I, I heard this uh, advertisement for something called a Radio Palooza. <laughs> and it was like, okay, that sounds like fun. I didn't make it to the Radio Palooza, but I did start listening to the station at that point. And um, I started hanging around and got involved. And Alex, um, Alex and I became friends and just, I've been around since uh, 2013. Alex so Perlis. Alex Perlis. Yes. And, um, it's, so I'm not one of the original founders. Um, uh, but I, so, but I've been around for long enough. Been around a long time, keeping, keeping the wheels on. Um, and, and I, they've been inclined to want to fall off several times. I know uh, you've helped me, um, I guess for in, in the interest of kind of, uh, along the lines of disclosure, Bruce has, more or less been the engineer for this show for third place for 
a very long time. So um, most of the installments of third place wouldn't have made it onto the air without Bruce's help. He just, he's the man behind the curtain. So thank you for all of your work with third place too, Bruce. I know you help with a lot of, a lot of shows, right? Well, that's actually part of my job is to help the DJs get their stuff on the air. Well, let's so, talk about that. What are the kinds of things you do with and for Baton Rouge Community Radio on a daily or at least a regular basis? Well, it's I do a little bit of everything. Like I said, I'm on the programming staff, so I kind of get to give my input on what shows go on the air. And then once they do, help set them up and get them going. And when they have problems, help get that solved, too. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of handholding and there's a lot of one-to-one -one with, a, with the DJs and it, that's the fun part about it. Uh, also there's the care and feeding of our, um, infamous Rivendell automation software, which does, <laughs> which requires quite a bit of, uh, playing with to keep it running smoothly and, um, stuff breaks and I fix it. So I think I've had almost every thing inside the radio station open at one point or the, or the other in the past eight years. Yeah, and I suspect that a lot of people who listen through the terrestrial, you know, method, they're just tuning in on their FM tuner in the car or at home or at work. Um, they may they may not even realize that we're streaming and then people who stream may not even be in Baton Rouge. They may be in other parts of the state or whatever, nationally or anywhere in the world. And, and Several they countries. Not, yeah, and they, and they may not realize that there's you know a way to listen just through your antenna so um there's a little bit of everything going on there at the station right you have to you have to grapple with with um, terrestrial and online issues as they arise all the time um the stream has had some ups and downs recently and the transmitters had some problems um we had issues with uh the towers mid-city towers uh losing power and we managed to keep the station on the air without power. Now that that was quite an accomplishment. I mean, <laughs> it, it took a bit of effort, um, but we did. We hung off the emergency lights for a bit, and then T-Mobile managed to get a generator up there. And we we want to thank them for letting us hang off of their generator. And then they ran a big extension cord up the side of the towers for a while, and now we finally got lights back in. So we we managed to stay on the air through all that um it's it's always something going on and yes we do have a big listenership on the stream around the world um not only just in the united states but i regularly see france and germany and britain pop up when i'm looking at who's streaming our shows you're listening to third place on 96.9 fm whyr in baton rouge or else streaming online through whyr.org and how are you able to see that? I mean, there's some kind of diagnostics or Google metrics or how do you see that? That's provided to us by our stream providers. Yes, we can. I can dial in and look around and see see who's who's looking at our show, who's listening to our show as it's happening. Yeah, and I, I understand that shows like Dr. Jazz, you know, we're the kinds of shows that people listen to anywhere and everywhere. There, there are another couple of shows that are, or listen to overseas as well, right? Oh, yes. And the funny thing of it is, those shows get listened to not from just WHYR, but because, well, we're part, first off, we're part of the uh, Pacifica Radio Network. Right. So we put our shows up on Pacifica, um, and other stations can download them and use them on their, on their shows. Uh, other low power stations like ourselves and other people in the Pacific radio network can, can do that. We have several shows out there that are heard across the country. I mean, from coast to coast in the United States that other radio stations are picking up and rebroadcasting. So we're quite a popular little radio station um, mm -hmm. for being a, for it's funny because we're just an LP 100 station, low power, hundred watt station. And yet, We've got a lot. We're punching so far above our weight class. Uh, there's a lot of other Pacifica radio stations that are a lot more high power and a lot more uh, have a lot more money than we do. Let's be honest here. And uh, they don't put out the quality of shows that we put out. 
um, there is a service that LP 100 stations can utilize when they first come on the air to, to basically have something when, when you get your transmitter license, you can basically use our service and, and, you know, generate some shows and make it sound like you're, you're ready to roll. Last time I looked, we had eight of our shows were being broadcast on that service. Oh, wow. So yeah, we're, we're popular. We're, we're a heck of a, we're, we're, and it's, again, it's not just our stream and our ter terrestrial radio. It's everybody else's too. Yeah, Bruce. I mean, you know, Hey, we're kind of important. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when you first came to the station, um, what did you want the station to be when you got involved with WHY? I understand you had experience at, at previous radio stations. So you probably had a better sense of things and, and what we could be. Um, could you describe a little bit of, of that for us? Well, unlike the rest of your guests here, um, I'm more, I'm, I'm a political person, but I'm not as political as many of the other people that work here at the, at the radio station. Right. I'm in it for the music. I enjoy the heck out of what we're playing. And while I do enjoy your shows, heck, third place is excellent. Okay. I'm not going to argue with that. Thank but you. There are so many good, great radio personalities that we have out there. Noel Jackson, and as you mentioned, Dr. Jess, the late Marcone. And there are just so many. Allie B and DJ Clay was on for a while. And right. We miss him. Um, Robert Sherman, and it's for folks in the Lowdown and Parallel Planet Terrestrial Radio Revival. All Sunday songwriter showcase needs to be listened to. Okay. That's right. And, and I am, I really, yes, I like the politics and yes, we need to keep that into it. We need to get our voices heard and all. And, and that's a major part of the radio station, but also I'm in it for the music and, and I'm there to help with that. I'm also there to help make the station work a lot smoother. Now, when I first started on, okay, first off, I'm an engineer and I do some software work. And when another engineer takes over for, for a previous guy, there's a lot of, oh, he messed up or, oh, he did this wrong. I'm going to do it the right, redo it and redo it the right way. I got lucky. Um, a lot of the stuff that was set up was done right from the beginning. Yes, there were some, some stuff that I've, I fixed and upgraded and all the rest of that stuff, but I had a good firm foundation. My job now is to make it even better, to make it more redundant, to make it so that there's a lot, a lot of stuff that has caused some downtime, some off the air time that we need backups for. There's, we need quality improvement in the audio, but you know what? The basic core is there and it's great. I've got a lot, a lot of stuff I want to fix. I want to make better, but I just want to make it. I, I just want to in, improve what we have. Excellent. And I, I hadn't ever heard that about the fact that you've started with a good foundation there. And I guess that's a testament to a lot of the work that Alex Perlis did, which is interesting to me because he's, he's definitely a computer guy. He's a math guy. Um, I didn't think of him as much of an electrical guy, not an engineer or anything like that. So um, I think he did well, you know, with, with the background that he had. Oh, heck yes. He, he had some good ideas. And, he, and I don't know if he was the only one doing hardware at the time. I think there were other people helping him for that side. But gotcha. um, whenever it comes down, whenever I'm still looking at the programs that he wrote, it's like, okay, I want to alter this as little as possible. What works actually makes sense. <laughs> so yes, it, it's, I, I'm, I, I'm very happy with the way things are right now. I just want to make them more redundant, more better. Understood. Well, thank you. That was very well put. And I understand what you're saying. I want to make sure that everybody who's listening um, has all the information they need for the station. So it's whyr.org. If you are listening through your FM tuner and didn't know that you could stream it online, um, we are accessible through whyr.org anywhere throughout Louisiana or throughout the world. And if you're streaming and you find yourself traveling to Louisiana and make it through Baton Rouge, 
then the way to listen to us when you when you get into town is through 96.9 FM on your radio dial. So one of the other things that I've been asking our guests of the series on the 10th anniversary of WHYR is, what do you think community radio is for? And I, I want to hear your thoughts on that, Bruce. Why is it important? Well, let's start off with the music side first. So many radio stations are just one arm or one little branch of some mega corporation that decide what the heck you're going to listen to. And we're not. We are about as independent as you can get. Different people come on the air and they have an idea for a show and it's great. There was one point that we were considering country shows and we had Doc Blake came up with Zulu Doc and, and um, he, he wanted an older country show. So we've got high country as, as it's now called. Then Kelly Patrick wants to do something a little more modern country but not the pop country that you hear everywhere else out there. And we've got the front porch and Clive slash Steven wants to come up and he wants to do Louisiana barn dance, which is the old, old country. And we have Louisiana barn dance via the old ranch hand. And so there's a lot (laughs) of music. Yes. We've got three country shows, but none of them are doing what everybody else is playing when they play country. Now on the other side of the coin, we've got independent voices. You want to put a show out there and you do, and you very much do, David, you want to, you want to highlight something that's important to you. You get up there and you speak your mind. There are several great shows out there where good political analysis is happening, where good information is being put out there. And it's not curated by any national company. We are our own curators. We decide what goes out over the air And it definitely has a local bent to it. And it, it is what we want to make it. It is, it's independent. It's wonderful. I mean, you would, and you can't find many commercial radio stations out there that are close to doing what we do. We have to pause for a 30 second station break or underwriting segment. And we'll be right back with more of our interview on the third place. Don't go away. You're listening to 96.9 FM, WHYRLP, Baton Rouge Community Radio. That's right. And, you know, I I spent a lot of time in Washington and so have access to a lot of stations in the Pacific Northwest and I've, I've found the same things. I mean, there's good quality radio happening out West, but wherever you go, you're hard pressed to find anything that has the kind of diversity and independence is one of the clutch words you mentioned there that we display through WHYR. So I appreciate your, your take on that. I, you know, one of the things is about the misconceptions for community radio. And so I, I'd like to hear from you what do you think would surprise baton rouge or the larger public to learn about our radio station (laughs) from behind the scenes (laughs) from behind the scenes yeah it's just the nicest bunch of people to work with that you can imagine i mean (laughs) i don't know if that's that's a misconception or not but it's just really fun working with everyone down there yes probably everybody realizes that we have no money and yet we're managing to put on a very professional sounding radio station on very, very low dollars. I don't know. I think the best thing we need to do is just to be noticed, to get our voices out there. That, that really is another misconception that people have is they think you need to be a professional to get on the air. And I can't tell you the number of people that are on the air now that have little or no radio experience and they sound great once they get used to it. Um, And that really is our job is to, Get people with a unique voice, either as a talk, as a um, as a as a more talk show oriented thing, or as music. You want a show? Go ahead and apply. If you're good enough, we'll put you on the air. And that just doesn't happen anywhere else. 
yes, we've got a lot of people that come from college radio, that come from high school radio, that come from other radio stations and that just want to have fun and do this. But really, we've got a lot of people that have come just off the streets and are doing fantastic jobs. Yeah, that's right. Well, I wonder if you could share with us your thoughts for the station's future. And you maybe already answered this question to some extent in that last um, response, because you're talking about getting noticed. Is that really a, a big part of it? When you when you look out, you know, say the 20th anniversary of WHYR, should we make it that far? And I suspect we will at, at this pace. Um, you know, what, what do you envision for us when you look out in, into the crystal ball? What I'd like to see is us going higher power, us to have the power of a normal radio station. And once we get that to be noticed, very uh, there's a lot of people that still don't know who we are. Seriously, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody. We're WHYR radio. We, we don't, there may not, you may not like what's being heard right now, but if you keep listening, I promise there's something out there for everybody, okay? So really, that we need to be noticed. And secondly, we, I really foresee us, hopefully once the FCC gets their act together, increase in power. And at that point, we can be a major force in Baton Rouge radio. Well, we've certainly demonstrated our ability to fill the 24 hours, seven days a week with quality programming, haven't we? Oh, yes. Yeah, you would think the FCC will, will grant that when the time comes. Well, um, I, got, I guess we probably have time for one more question. I, if someone's listening right now and they want to help out, how would they go about doing that? Is there some way that, that um, a listener could become a volunteer and, and help plug in to the, the goodness of Baton Rouge Community Radio? Or, and do you need help with what you're doing for the station, Bruce? Oh, heck yes. Everyone here needs help. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're on a shoestring budget and everybody needs additional help. Seriously, just go to our website and become a volunteer. And if you have an idea for a new show, go to our website, propose a new show. Um, the one thing I learned about commercial radio, about non-commercial radio a while back was that just hanging out is how you get appointed to do stuff. Um, literally, you, you hang around and all of a sudden people will put you to work. Um, go ahead, submit your name, see what the heck's going on find out what find out what you can do we can you everybody here needs somebody needs help um if you've got a technical background contact me but otherwise just go out to whyr submit a volunteer form and we'll be glad we we could all oh, really use the help and you do that through whyr.org so anybody that wants to plug in and roll up their sleeves and help out and help produce the sound or per help pr produce the shows that um, that fill up your airwaves and and maybe fill up your your homes or your car or your office space. Um, that's all you got to do. Like Bruce said, just show up and have a willingness to learn and to share your creativity. We'd love to have you. WHYR.org. Bruce Kives, thank you so much for all that you do, for all that you've done to help create the sound and, and create the experience for our listeners in Baton Rouge, around Louisiana, and throughout the world. Oh, you're very welcome, David. You're very, very welcome. Take care, my friend. All right. You have a nice one. Thanks again to Righteous Buddha.